Good morning, and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and I both invite and encourage you to walk with me on the road to wisdom. Come on, y'all. Let's walk. Good morning and welcome to another edition of The Road to Wisdom. I'm your host, Danny Graham. Thank you for dropping in. This morning, I want to talk about something that has been on my mind all weekend, ever since I received the initial text from a friend of mine on Saturday about something that had transpired. It's been on my mind. Um, some of you may or may have not seen the opening ceremonies for the Paris Olympics, but they did something that I thought was just totally, it, it, it was crazy to me. Uh, when I first saw it, the first emotion that came to my mind was disbelief. Because I did not believe what I was seeing. I would not believe that certain people took something that was, that was so religious and something that was so profound and made a mockery of it, at least in my opinion. That's how I perceived it. Next thing, next, the next emotion that I felt was disrespectfulness. I'm like, wow, you would take something like that, that's something, that hope, that's something that a, a great number of people in the world hold near and dear with such reverence and this totally disrespect. Then from disrespectfulness, I, I, I went to another emotion, which was disappointment, because I was like, man, I really thought that we were turning the curve as far as trying to respect each other, um, views, opinions, um, cultures, thoughts lifestyles, I guess. But I see I see now for a fact that we might be just as maybe you know even maybe even a worse place now than we were a few years ago. And the last emotion I felt was disregard. I'm just going to disregard this because I'm going to explain to you what I meant by being disregarded. Now I want to talk about this. I don't, and usually I'm more time conscious and time aware of how much time I have on these videos, because I know people don't want to be watching a video for 30, 40, 50 minutes. I can't tell you how long this video is going to be because I have a lot. I have two pages of notes, which I wrote down. And I want to make sure I get my point across. And I want to make sure that when I'm finished with this uh, video, that I've said all I need to say about this. Now, the definition of disbelief, which is the first emotion that I felt was the inability, the inability or refusal to believe or accept something is true. When I first saw this video of, I guess it was drag queens is the terminology that they use, men in drag, depicting the Last Supper, I could not believe it. I was like, what in the world? I, I, I can't believe this. And before I go any further, let me just show you what I'm talking about in case some of you haven't seen it. Um... I want to make sure that you see this. These are some of the things that were said, some of the comments. Vincent O'Shana, I'm not sure who he is. He's, he called it an, abom an abomination. The opening ceremony of the Olympics mocked Jesus by recreating the Last Supper with drag queens. A gay smurf and a few children sprinkled in there just for fun. Clearly overt pagan, satanic symbolism. And they call us conspiracy theorists. This is one person's opinion. Another person here is we are absolutely disgusted to see these drag queens and half naked gender cultists dance around little kids at the Olympics for the entire world to watch. This agenda isn't just an American issue, it's global. And if it doesn't horrify you, then you aren't paying attention. Another person, Colin Rugg, said, the Paris Olympics is under fire for including a child in their hypersexualized, blasphemous rendition of The Last Supper. And a parent child could be seen joining the drag queens during the performance. I think I can't see what it said, but it's like instead of bringing pe people together, it's like bringing people apart. And Olive London said, over 1 billion people around the world will watch the Olympics opening ceremony. And this is the best that France can do. A man dressed as a smurf Surrounded by drag queens and a plus size woman who's playing, I guess, the role of Jesus. I'll let you finish watching this. 
As you can see right there, they are depicting the Last Supper. Uh, and to me, this is just totally, when I first saw it, I was in disbelief. Then I said, my next emotion was feeling utterly, utterly disrespected. Then that emotion went to disappointment. And my last and final emotion, which I'm going to cover in, in, in later on in this video, was disregard. I'm going to disregard it. But let's continue, continue watching the video. The question he asked, did Paris fail this historic moment? They, they most certainly did fail it. It's a, very, it's a disappointment to a lot of people around the world, globally. Not just in the United States, but globally. As you see, the display was a recreation of Leonardo's Da Vinci mural of Jesus and the Twelve Apostles. This is the this is at the bottom. You see the traditional one that we've seen for years. It's been around for thousands of years now, or hundreds of years. Now we see whatever Paris, the people in Paris, was thinking. And I guess this is their version of it. And you can see it's totally, totally um, disrespectful. Now, as you can see, there were some people, a lot of people, a lot more than that. I can show you a lot more that were totally disrespected, totally against this. But there were there's, there's equally many people that was for it, was like, oh, this is art. This is this. This is that. And to me, it's just really sad. Because statistics, when I researched over 28.6 million people, the United States viewed that. Kids, families, sitting down watching that, and then to see something that we hold in such reverence, reverence, and something that we believe in, and, and from the faith faith based community, to see it totally be what's the word I want to use? Just totally be just disrespect, disrespect, bastardized is a word that comes to mind, um, and just totally. Just totally, utterly disrespect in, in, in this <clears throat> in the name or in the sake for some kind of joke, some kind of artistic expression. I don't know what it is. I don't know who could think this would be a good idea, especially from a community that has faced some of the same things 
that early Christians face. They face persecution. Uh, they want to be included. They want to be treated fairly. They want to be respected. But then the very people that they complain about, that doesn't show them inclusion, equality, understanding or acceptance, they do something like this to, more, to, to essentially poke the bear. If you want to be included, if you want to strive for inclusion, if you want to strive for acceptance, if you want to strive for respect, then why would you do something that you know would dis that would disrespect or antagonize or infuriate the people that you have been saying all these years have been persecuting you? I don't understand that. Don't understand that at all. The creative director of this of this reenactment or whatever you want to call it, opening ceremony name is Thomas Jolly. And this is his statement. I wrote it verbatim. He said, we are lucky in France to live in a free country. I didn't have any specific message that I wanted to deliver. But in France, we are a republic. We have the right to love whom we want. We have the right not to be worshipers. We have a lot of rights in France. And that is what I wanted to convey. Now, he was very duplicitous because one of the first things he says, I didn't have any specific message. Then at the end of this message, he says, and that is what I want to convey. You conveyed exactly what you want to convey, that you don't care whether or not you disrespected or hurt anybody's feelings or, or, or took a crap on somebody's beliefs. Because in France... You can love who you want. Last time I checked, in the United States, we can love who we want too. But we don't go around doing something like this at the Olympics. We wouldn't come around saying something that we know would offend any one of the countries if the Olympics were held in here in the United States. I don't recall us ever doing that. I don't recall us ever having an open ceremony that was distasteful. In fact, I don't recall ever having any other country having an opening ceremony that was just distasteful for a specific demographic. The Christians. The Christian demographic was targeted, in my opinion, in this opening ceremony. And when you think about it, it goes back to biblical stuff because whenever things seem to be going smooth or running smooth, the devil always throw something in there. And while Christians feel disrespected, angry, Hostile, that's the devil's plan. I believe with 1,000% that's his plan. He put whatever craziness in these people's mind just so he could cause the Christians to be up in arms, lose their cool, lose their composure, be ungodlike. And so that's when the four different emotions I went through, like I said, at first it was disbelief, it was disrespectful, added with a little bit of anger disappointment, and then finally, disregardment. I'm going to disregard this in the fact that I'm going to deliberately not pay this any attention or give this any life because by speaking in anger, by speaking in a tone, in a way that's not God-like, that's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to lose our cool. He wants us to lose our composure. He wants us to get angry and get outside of ourselves and get outside of God's teaching. And we can't let that happen. Two scriptures come to mind when I'm going to tell you. The book of Proverbs, the 14th chapter, the 17th and 18th verse reads as follows. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly and a man of wickedness intentions, of wicked intentions is hated. Let me say that one more time. Proverbs, the 14th chapter, the 17th and 18th verse. The 17th verse reads as this. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. There's no doubt in my mind there was some wicked intentions going on. Whether this was the, the director of this thing, his name was Thomas. I want to make sure I get this information right. Thomas Jolly. I don't know what his motivation was. I don't know if he's a wicked man. I don't know him from Adam Housecat. But this act seemed very wicked to me, like it has some kind of 
wicked undertone to try and top of the spiritual apple cart, apple cart, so to speak. And for some Christians, it, it, it probably it, it, it made you heated. I, when I first heard it, it made me a little heated. I'm not going to say it a lot. But I had time to sit down, reflect on it, digest it, pray to God, ask for guidance. And God gave me this, what I'm talking about here on this particular show today. You can't let these evil intentions, this foolish stuff, get us out of our our, our spiritual our spiritual mode, our spiritual train of thought, because that's what devil wants us to do. He wants us to get spiritually out of character, and we can't allow that to happen. Proverbs 18 chapter reads: "A simple in, inherent folly, but the prudent." Are crowned with knowledge. Let me say that one more time. The simple, the simple minded are inherit with folly. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. And the simple people, which is what folly is, a lack of good sense, they'll fall for this. They'll fall for the devil's tricks. They'll fall for the devil okie doke. They'll think, oh, they laugh like this. Oh, yes, this is. This is so creative. This is expression. This is that. And not knowing they fall into the devil's trap. Not knowing that they are just pawns on his spiritual chessboard and they fall for the okie doke. But the prudent, which we should be as Christians, and prudent is acting with or showing care and thought for the future, should realize this is just a, a trick. Because we know that. Two things biblically that God gave us or shared with us, certain lifestyles are taking those as their symbols. First is the rainbow. Rainbow is a covenant between God and us that he will not destroy the world again with water. He made that, that covenant with, no, with Noah. But we see they take that, same rain, that, that symbol, the rainbow, and use it as the symbol for their lifestyle. Second thing is today, or what we saw this past weekend, they took the Last Supper, which is very historical, very, very monumental spiritually because it was the night before Jesus was unjustly crucified and died for our sins. They want to take something that is so precious, so that it, is, it should have such reverence and use it and disregard it like a piece of trash to pervert it. In such a way that it's not unrighteous, but we can't let the, we can't let the devil's plans and schemes get us in that mindset. Yeah, disbelief. Yes, when I first saw it, I did not believe what I was seeing. Then I went to disrespectful and anger. I was like, man, this is this is totally disrespectful. Then it went to disappointment. I'm disappointed that these people can't see that they're being used by the enemy. But that's what he does. That's what he does. The last thing I'm going to do is just totally disregard this because I'm not going to let the intention of the enemy take me out of my spiritual character. And that's what this is that what this is trying to do. It's trying to take us out of our spiritual character. It's trying to get us off that road of righteousness into the road of anger and stupidity, stupidity, stupidness and doing stuff. Out of knee jerk reactions, you gotta sit down and kind of read the tea leaves. A lot of times, knee jerk reactions will get you get you in trouble. You gotta sit down and analyze them. what is the purpose of these people doing this. This came out of nowhere. What the purpose is, the enemy is putting these thoughts, these games in their minds, and they're falling for it because they're not spiritually strong. We gotta be spiritually strong. Also, when I saw this, I thought about Jesus being on the on the on the cross and dying. And he says in Luke the 23rd, chapter 24th verse, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. That that scripture came to my mind. I just had to research it and find out exactly where it was at. But it's Luke the 23rd, chapter 24th verse, and Jesus said, while on the cross, before he died, 
Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And that's what we got to do as Christians. We got to forgive these people because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They think they're doing something that's funny and kiki and ha ha and all this kind of stuff. Don't have a clue what they're doing. What they're doing is putting sins in their sin cup. And right now it's sweet because they're on this side of judgment. But on the other side of judgment, that sweet sin that they're putting in the cups now is not going to taste so sweet. It's going to taste bitter. And they got to drink it. And they got to go in front of Jesus and be judged for the silly, silly stuff that they did. I wonder. I wonder how funny the people thought it was when it started raining in Noah's time <clears throat> and God closed that door. 120 years prior, they thought Noah was a fool. When you tell me it's going to build an ark because it's going to be a flood. They laugh and they kiki and they ha ha and all this kind of stuff until that first raindrop started hitting them. Then they realize, oh boy, what have we done? Why didn't we listen? These same people doing this crazy stuff now on Judgment Day, they're going to have them same thoughts. Oh Lord, why did we okay that opening ceremony? Why was I a part of that? I knew better, but I thought it was funny. I was kiki and I was ha ha. It was expression. It was this. I have the right to say this. I have the right to do that. I got a right to love this. I got a right to love whatever. But when you get pulled on that carpet, you got to drink that cup that was sweet prior to the judgment, but now it's, it's awfully bitter. What you going to do then? What you going to do then? I can imagine too also that the people. And Solomon and Gomorrah thought that what they were doing was pretty cool. Man, we can sleep with whoever we want to. We can do what we want to. We can live how we want to. We can love how we want to. We can do all that stuff until that fire and brimstone started raining down. I wonder if they had that same kiki, ha ha, I can do what I want. I can love who I want mindset when those balls of fire and brimstone came falling out of the sky. I wonder how they felt then. Probably the same way these people are going to feel post-judgment day. Pre-judgment pre -judgment day, everything is fun, fun and games, and everybody laughing. Yeah, hey, I can do what I want. Ha, 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 he, he, ha, ha. Post-judgment is going to be a whole different, whole different ball game. So, again, I'm going to disregard this trick that the devil is trying to do because I think he's trying to rough with our, the feathers of the Christians. And he did to a certain extent, but we can't let our feathers con con remain and continue to be ruffled. We have to pray even more. We have to encourage each other. We have to make sure that we are all on the same page. And that page comes from the book called the Bible. We got to make sure that our relationship with God is even more stronger, that we pray every day. Each day that our relationship, we take care and nourish and nurture that relationship with God. Because the devil is going to try more and more tricks as he get closer to the end times. He knows end times is coming. He knows his time is limited. He knows that he has to do everything in his power to try to get as many people against God. That's what he wants to do. But we can't let his tricks, his deceptions throw us off course. This was a trick and the deception. This this open ceremony was a big trick and deception. And it throwing some people off, throwing some of us off course, but we got to get back on course. Just my two cents on that. I could be looking at it totally wrong from a different prism than you're looking at it. And if so, hey, God made, it, God made us all different. Maybe he's revealing something to me that he didn't reveal to you or maybe vice versa. I don't know. But that's the way I see it. And I'm going to continue to do what I'm going to do. And that is praise God, read the Bible, and try to be the best version of Danny that I can possibly be. Now, just like this weekend, you're going to come across some ignorant people. Well, spiritually ignorant, that is. I don't want to be disrespectful. You're going to come across some spiritually, spiritually ignorant people. They're going to test you and, and ask you crazy questions. They may say something about this 
mm-hmm. the ceremony that they liked it and it was it's no big deal. We we blown it out of proportion. We're making a mountain out of a molehill, whatever the case may be. But we get an opportunity to talk to talk to them and tell them, tell them something like this, because this is what I'm gonna do. Say, hey, look, you can do you can believe whatever you want to, but I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. That comes from Pastor Vody Bachman. You can check them out on YouTube. Um, if this is the first time you ever seeing me on YouTube. I actually do a few things for me. First, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to ask you to please leave a notification. I mean, hit the notification bell because I don't want you to miss any material that I upload in the future. If you like this video, leave me a comment. Tell me your thoughts on this. Tell me about did you watch opening ceremonies in Paris or not? Or, or do you think I'm going out of proportion or do you agree with me? Please leave a comment. I would love to hear what you got to say. Also, share this video with all your friends and family. And I hope that it will spark a conversation that they may or may not have with God. Um, some people hadn't talked to God in a long time. And that's okay. But guess what? Today is the is the perfect day to have that conversation with him and develop and start that relationship with God. Because I'm I'm guarantee you he would love to hear from you. So until Wednesday, I have a fantastic day. Uh continue to pray because we're going through it now. The United States, the whole world is going through it now, and we need prayer more than ever. More than ever, we need that. So until Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Senate time, same back time, same back channel. I'll be right here. Have a good day. And God bless you.